It's 2012. Gangnam Style is the hottest song and you just came back from watching The Dark Knight Rises in theaters. While watching, you notice, hey, it's that guy from Inception, playing the officer that befriends Batman. Joseph Gordon-Levitt is his name and you'll soon start to see him everywhere that year. A few months later, you see him as the lead in Looper, then soon after that in Spielberg's Lincoln, but probably not in Premium Rush as it flopped at the box office. Joseph Gordon-Levitt was taking over Hollywood and we were all excited to see where he'd go next, but it didn't work out the way we were expecting it to. Otherwise, we wouldn't be asking what the heck happened to him. There were a few factors that led to his downfall, if you can even call it that, because even though he's somewhat fallen out of the public eye, his personal life became much better. Let's call it a downfall in popularity. But either way, we're diving into this question by starting at the beginning. Joseph's grandfather, Michael Gordon, was a film director born in Baltimore to Jewish parents in 1909. Okay, maybe we shouldn't start that far back. Joseph Gordon-Levitt was born in Los Angeles, California in 1981. His acting career began at the age of four where he played the Scarecrow in a theater production of The Wizard of Oz. After that, he was approached by an agent and began appearing in many commercials and made-for-TV movies. Notable appearances included as Cocoa Puffs and Pop-Tarts commercials. He also starred in the 1991 Dark Shadows show. Some major films he's been in include Holy Matrimony with Patricia Arquette, Angels in the Outfield with Danny Glover, and The Juror. Bada bing. None of these movies were good. And this brings us to his biggest role yet, the TV show Third Rock from the Sun, where he plays Tommy Solomon, who's part of a group of aliens pretending to be human. The show went on for six seasons from 1996 to 2001. And during this time, he also starred in one of my favorite movies of his, 10 Things I Hate About You with Heath Ledger and Julia Stiles. In the year 2000, he attended Columbia University and this is when he kicked his career up a notch. Manic, Treasure Planet, Mysterious Skin, and Ryan Johnson's Brick. He was on a hot streak as the lead with all of these movies getting good reviews. He dropped out of Columbia in 2004 to focus on acting, saying that he wanted to be in good movies with his return. But the next few years wouldn't be all he hoped for because he was mostly starring in mediocre films. But his performance in 2007's The Lookout still received a lot of praise. In 2009, he comes out swinging with 500 Days of Summer where his acting was a highlight of the film, getting him a Golden Globe nomination. That year, he also starred as a villain in the G.I. Joe movie. Joseph Gordon-Levitt started off the 2010s very well, but I'm not talking about the movie Hesher, which he was good in. I'm talking about the blockbuster juggernaut Inception. Although hard to stand out being surrounded by so many great actors, this was his most mainstream film to date. The year after, he was in 50-50 with Seth Rogen, which got him his second Golden Globe nomination for acting. Without a doubt, 2012 was the best year of his career. The Dark Knight Rises, Premium Rush, Looper, and Lincoln. All of these did well with critics and three of them were box office hits. Looper would be his third film with Ryan Johnson in the director's chair. He'd work with him again in a smaller role by getting a voice cameo in The Last Jedi and Knives Out. He even had his directorial debut the year after with Don John, which he starred in himself alongside Scarlett Johansson. It did well at the box office and pretty well with the critics, getting an unexpected a from Chris Stuckman. Joseph Gordon-Levitt easily had one of the best starts to that decade. So how did it get to us wondering what happened to him? Reason number one, the bad run of movies. <laughs> This one gets many actors as you might have seen in our Winona Ryder video. And it's usually a mixture of both critically bad and box office bad that puts the nail in the coffin. Because if you aren't bringing in money for the studios, you won't get cast often. <laughs> Damn, my rhymes are just popping. <laughs> It's unfortunate because it often takes only a few unlucky years of unsuccessful films to really kill your career. During this time, he was actually a front runner with Paul Rudd for the role of Ant-Man. It's crazy how completely different his career would have been if he got that role. He would have had at least a handful more blockbusters to his name, which would have improved his ability to land roles for the latter half of the decade. In 2014, he starred in the Sin City sequel, which didn't fare well with the critics and did horribly at the box office, earning under $40 million on a $65 million budget. Quite the opposite of the original which excelled in both. The year after, he'd be in The Walk, a film that was a great theater experience and did pretty well with the critics and box office, but was ultimately a letdown for Robert Zemeckis' standards. He then reunited with the 50-50 director and Seth Rogen for 2015's The Night Before, which did okay enough at the box office. Then he took another shot at the lead in 2016's Snowden, which was another box office flop and did meh with the critics. His run of movies wasn't even that bad, but it was enough for Hollywood to lose interest and realize that his name wasn't able to bring in the audiences. During his rise in the 2000s, he still received praise for his performance in mediocre films, but now the praisers have gone quiet. 
being nowhere near the level of popularity he had in 2012 would be one factor that caused him to take a break. The other factor would be changes in his personal life that coincided with his bad run of films. In 2014, he got married and would have a son in 2015 and another in 2017. In an interview leading up to his return, he mentioned, stopping wasn't because I wanted to stop acting or stop working. It was because I wanted to spend time with my kids. He also said that he used to shoot three movies a year, but now he shoots one a year as it provides a better work-life balance. And before we get to his return, we need to rewind a bit to go over a major part of his career that many of you might not know about. But before we do so, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you've enjoyed this video so far. We've got some exciting videos on the way that we wouldn't want you to miss out on, but okay, back to the video. In 2010, when his career slowed down a bit, he created Hit Record, an online collaborative media platform for producing films, mostly short films, books, and DVDs. It was technically created in 2005 alongside his brother Dan, but it wasn't until 2010 where it expanded to what it is now. The site would allow users to collectively collaborate on their own uploaded pieces of media. Hit Record would also pay contributing artists for their work. It was a hit at the 2010 Sundance Festival where it was first shown, and by 2012 it had 80,000 plus members and about 1,000 forms of media uploaded daily. On the creation of Hit Record, Record, Joseph said, I wanted to be creative and no one was letting me. I want to dance. So I said, okay, I have to figure out something to do on my own. Hit Record went on to produce 13 short films, a few books, and even some albums within the first few years, all packed with user collaborations. It was also one of the production companies behind his film, Don John. In 2014, Joseph and Hit Record would premiere the show, Hit Record on TV. The show would be similar to the content of the website, featuring short films, cartoons, live performances, and discussions. Each episode had a specific theme and had about $50,000 set aside for compensating contributors artists. The first episode alone had 426 people contribute. Joseph Gordon-Levitt would win a social TV experience primetime Emmy that year for it, and the show would get a second season the following year. Okay, his break is over. Joseph Gordon-Levitt is well rested and back to acting. So what has he done since? His most popular role was playing one of the lawyers in Aaron Sorkin's The Trial of the Chicago 7 that released on Netflix in 2020. Although a minor part, this would be Joseph's most mainstream role since his return. He only starred in two other films. The first being 7500 where he played a co-pilot whose plane is hijacked by terrorists. The film released on Prime Video in 2019 with okay reviews but was not very popular. And he also starred alongside Jamie Foxx in Project Power where they hunt together for the source of a superpower pill. The film released on Netflix in 2020 to mediocre reviews and was popular enough, but hard to tell if it was worth the budget of $85.1 million. He'd go on to take another shot at a streaming giant, but this time with the TV show he created, writing, directing, and starring in it. Mr. Corman, a comedy slash drama show that released on Apple TV Plus in 2021 that followed the life of a public school teacher played by Joseph. The show would get okay reviews, but it didn't do well enough for Apple. And it only lasted one season where cancellations were announced the day of the season finale. In 2022, he played the CEO of Uber in Showtime Super Pumped. The show wasn't too popular and it didn't receive good reviews, but it did get renewed for a second season. Unfortunately for Joseph, this is an anthology TV show where each season will focus on a different book by Mike Isaac, with the second season being about Facebook, so he most likely won't be making a return for the next season. It hasn't all been downhill since his return. He had a 14 episode podcast going from 2019 to 2020 called Creative Processing. It was liked by many and focused on what creative people do in a variety of industries. In 2020, with Hit Record, Joseph created a YouTube series called Create Together for coping with the COVID pandemic by being creative. Similar to past hit record projects such as hit record on tv the series would have people collaborating online on different projects but this time it was a way to help deal with isolation it was a six episode series that won him a primetime emmy for outstanding innovation and in interactive programming he went on to make a second season for the series getting him another emmy nomination the following year although not very popular the most important part was that the series helped many people who were struggling with mental health get through these tougher times so even though it wasn't that exciting of a return it's still nice to see joseph gordon levitt being active again. He's got quite a few projects lined up. He'll be reuniting with Robert Zemeckis for the 2022 live action adaptation of Pinocchio where he'll be voicing Jiminy Cricket. It was also recently announced that he'd be starring alongside Lily James in the dark comedy The Problem with Providence which is set to film in 2022. He's also set to star alongside Chloe Grace Moretz in White Knight, a drama about the Jonestown Massacre where he'll be playing Jim Jones. And as for his directing, there's been talks back to 2017 about his next project titled Wingmen, an R-rated musical starring himself and Channing Tatum where they play two pilots who crash land in Las Vegas. I don't know about you but that sounds like an awesome idea and I love it but 
but there hasn't really been any recent news about it, so let's not get our hopes too high up. It does seem like we'll be seeing Joseph Gordon-Levitt in more movies again soon, potentially being in two to three films in 2022. He seems to be balancing his work and life better, and maybe these new films will do well enough to give him that resurgence in his career. What I'm also interested in seeing is what else he'll do with Hit Record. So I hope that answered the question as to what the heck happened to Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Although not as dramatic as our other videos in the series, it ends off on a more positive note, and I'm excited to see where his career goes from here. But that's all we have for you today. Thanks for watching, and until next time, have a good one.